And ISRO has created history again. It launched the PSLVC 55 Telios 2 at 2.19 p.m. IST from Sri Harikota today. Our next report gets you more about it. Four, three, two, one, zero. ISRO creates history again. It launched PSLVC 55 Telios 2 from Sri Harikota on Saturday. ISRO PSLVC 55 is a... PSLV mission of New Space India Limited for an international satellite customer from Singapore. The PSLV has placed both the satellite uh, Telios 2 and Loom Light in the internet orbit. This was a mission towards east direction and the inclination is uh, very small, 9.99 degrees, very precise. And the PSLV in its 57th mission has once again demonstrated its high reliability and uh, its suitability for commercial missions of this class. So congratulations once again to NSIL and PSLV team for this exciting mission. ISRO PSLV C-55 is a dedicated commercial PSLV mission of New Space India Limited for an international satellite customer from Singapore. This is a dedicated commercial mission through NSIL with Telios 2 as primary satellite and Loom Light 4 as a co-passenger satellite. The satellites weigh about 741 kg and 16 kg, both belong to Singapore. The Telios 2 satellite is developed under partnership between DSTA and ST Engineering. Once developed and operational, it will be used to support the satellite imagery requirement of various agencies within the government of Singapore. Telios 2 carries a synthetic aperture radar payload. It will be able to provide all weather day and night coverage and capable of imaging at 1M fully polymetric resolution. The Loom Light 4 satellite is co-developed by Institute for Infocom Research of ASTAR and Satellite Technology and Research Center of the National University of Singapore. Loom Light is an advanced 12U satellite developed for tech demonstration of high-performance space-borne VHF data exchange system using the VDES communication payload developed by 12R and Star Scalable Satellite Plus platform. It aims to augment Singapore's e-navigation maritime safety and benefit the global shipping community. In this particular mission, we had uh, the primary satellite, Telios 2, which is the radar imaging satellite built by ST Engineering and DSTA, which is a governmental agency. And I'm, I'm happy to inform here, this is the first time a radar imaging satellite has been made by the Singapore team indigenously. And uh, I would like to take the opportunity to thank on behalf of NSI and ISRO, the team uh, Singapore, for this uh, wonder if, uh, wonderful effort that you have taken up. Now, in this mission, we also had one more uh, Satellite, Loom Light 4. These were the two satellites which are separated from the launch vehicle, Loom Light 4, which is a nano satellite uh, technology demonstrated for Singapore once again. And uh, I'm sure that in the future, once these satellites have been placed in such a precise orbit, their in orbit operations and the demonstration and the services that this particular satellite is going to provide to the nation is going to be extremely important. This is the 57th flight of PSLV and 16th mission using the PSLV code alone configuration. This is the third time that PS4 will be used after satellite separations as a platform for experiments. Bureau report, DD India. All right, let's get more perspective on this and understand why this is an important launch and what it really means for India's space sector. I'm joined by Professor Dr. Daya Shankar Kulstresh, to former HOD at the Department of Physics and Astrophysics at the University of uh, Delhi. Dr. Kusresh, uh, welcome to DD India this evening. Uh, you know, first of all, congratulations as somebody who's not just uh, been working in astrophysics, but as a fellow citizen, it's a proud moment for the country. Uh, the Indian Space Research Organization launching the PSLVC 55 today. Your first thoughts, uh, what do you make of this? Uh, in the first place, I would like to congratulate the entire ISRO team, as well as its counterparts from Singapore, its uh, uh, commercial wing and the entire team of academia, ISRO scientists all over uh, the, the country. 
uh, and for this very very greatly successful mission called Telios 2 and as uh, India has a real good expertise it's, it's experimentally well tested over decades now for I mean on our various uh, moon missions Mars missions it has been experimentally yeah. truly well tested and now this is going to provide these facilities to the Singaporean government you see so the various agencies working under the Singapore government so they could coordinate extremely well their imaginary requirements would be taken care of by this uh, successful launch of today's uh, main primary satellite as well as its uh, its co-passenger uh, the two together they are going to I mean the the co-passenger the Lum Light 4 is going to provide very high frequency data exchange system you see and the first one the main uh, main satellite is going to provide us uh, to complete the imagery requirements imagery requirements of the various agencies working under the singapore government you see we have we have done this very very successfully within india uh, for our own mapping of several kinds you see and we have used this technology for the mapping of the moon and and uh, successfully for the mars mission and now uh, we can feel proud of this entire uh, program the success of this program i was watching on dd india uh, exactly a, a few minutes before the launch of this uh, program and uh, uh, i was very excited with the uh, and thrilled with the success of this entire program they were uh, announcing from second to second in fact their table showed some seconds uh, within the seconds i mean yes. units were seconds were used for that uh, after how many seconds this happened after how many seconds and and uh, be, it, it's a very proud proud moment for the entire country for the entire nation as well sure. as for our counterparts in singapore Sure. Sure. Uh, I mean, absolutely, uh, Dr. Kutresh, too. We all have been thrilled and uh, looking at those live images coming out of yes. Sri Harikota. Yes. But also, uh, you know, for the layman, help us understand, simplify the process of what we just saw a short while back. What really happens uh, when the PSLV C-55 was launched and then there were different stages, the first stage, second, third and fourth stages. Help us understand this whole process. You see, this is a, I mean, uh, several steps are in fact involved in this entire program. And our Sri Harikota uh, uh, is extremely well equipped with these all facilities. And our PSLV, this is in fact, uh, this has been done for the 57th time. I did not remember the number uh, earlier, but it, it, it says it's the 57th flight. Yeah. And, after and the few, lightest PSLV. Yes, 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 and, and the lightest one. And yeah. the b one important aspect also that I noticed was out of the seven payloads, one of them is really uh, the startup program. Sometimes when I see that some people try to just without understanding make some jokes on the startup, that's not true actually. If, if our talent is given the opportunity to demonstrate their capability, you see here is an example of its success at stage by stage, you see. And uh, so, uh, yeah. And, and it's going going to be proved. It's going to prove itself to be very extremely helpful uh, for for the Singapore government. I mean, for its various agencies. And um, uh, well, because of the availability of these various platforms, social media platforms, now people are very well aware of all this. Uh, all these. Uh, things in, in, yeah. fact, in, in fact we use the simple principles of classical physics here while taking off at each step and uh, of course for the deep space communication and navigation uh, these quantum concepts are, are also used and uh, so I mean conceptually it's founded on a very very solid concept you see and uh, I would not remember the technical names of these various uh, various components, but the, but the main concept is uh, already answered in our so-called Newtonian physics or the classical physics, and this deep space navigation. Like you see, when 
when we place this satellite into the so called this uh, low inclina low, low yeah. inclination orbit and communicating with it keeping track of it all the time continuously and and communicating with with it Uh, requires real good, real good skills, and uh, the team of our ISRO scientists, as well as uh, its counterparts in Singapore, they are all continuously involved in this en entire program. Sure. Uh, let me also now get into the specifics, uh, Dr. Kulshreesh, of each satellite that this PSLVC 55 was carrying. First was, of course, uh, Tejas 2, the first Singaporean satellite, yes. uh, and it carried a synthetic aperture radar payload. What exactly does that mean, sir, and how does it really help in the functioning of the satellite? This, actually, you see here, these are two, three important aspects of this. One thing is that it's all weather, so it would yeah. work whether it's whether it's warm or cold or rains or water, whatever. Uh, so, so all weather it will work, and then it is the radar, the radar system imaging. This is developed by Singapore team. and this is also so under all weathers it is going to work continuously you see uninterrupted this, this is this is uh, one important thing and uh, i mean of course this uh, data science is very important and so very high frequency data exchange would be uh, possible with this uh, lum light 4 and this imaginary requirements would be uh, would be taken care of by the main satellite so called uh, uh, telios 2 you see so yes. uh, 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 i i think it's it's a, it's a very 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 useful program and the involvement of youth and the startups and the various things payload payloads you see are developed by the the various academia involved here and there uh, including the startups is well it's it's one seventh but even Uh, nevertheless it's it's very important and uh, so these various uh, payloads are being developed at at other uh, various different places and then they are being put together uh, eventually submitted to the main leader our isro chair person mr somnath uh, as he explained at the at the beginning uh, i mean all these things they take place so even this commercial wing it, it's a, it's a it's an official part of our isro team You see, so yeah. it works under one central leadership is one. You see, so so mainly the the chairperson of the ISRO and the direct the, the director of this particular mission also explained its uh, uh, I mean the the success aspects of this particular program. Right, right, uh, Dr. Kulshreesh. You know, um, you mentioned the fact that youngsters have been given a chance uh, in India's space sector now. How much of a change does it bring to an organization like the Indian Space Research Organization when young talent of a country is given an opportunity to showcase their talent and contribute in nation building? Actually, it's a rather continuous program for our country. They come even to our physics department, Delhi University. regularly and our students are being uh, selected there and they, they keep joining this isro team almost on a continuous basis you see every year and uh, they work on various aspects of uh, so so it's it's a vast program and yeah. the, my my students when they come back they tell me that there is a real involvement of the younger people at various stages it's not that and everybody has freedom you see to communicate one's ideas and tell one's uh, uh, one's thoughts to their to their senior scientists and uh, i think it works perfectly fine and and the younger people do have a good representation and good opportunity to participate in this various thing. and you see all our students all over the india wherever they are spread it they they do notice these thing for them these things are more important they they take note of the success of each and every uh, project uh, developed by isro and uh, its various uh, components its various uh, its various aspects its various parts and they the students i think they have i i am referring to the to the masters students and the phd research students who later on join and go into the various uh, specific aspects of this program they have very clear thoughts you see and their knowledge of this uh, 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 computational physics computations in science 
it is going to it has actually it has taken over the many other fields you see including computer science itself is now dominated uh, highly by the by our uh, uh, physics students everywhere you see because because they are very well versed with the fundamentals of science fundamentals of physics including we have we have substantial courses within our physics uh, syllabi on uh, computer labs and computer programs and and theory and uh, lab practical programs and uh, this helps our students go anywhere including that this is right. actually happens to be one of the leading places where they uh, the other leading place is of course uh, baba atomic research center and uh, drdo yeah. Uh, but isro is one of the very no, leading you see yes it, dr konstrashta you know from from the time when you started reading and uh, studying astrophysics to now you see a kind of change in the awareness level and the interest level uh, in the space sector among youngsters in the country oh, of course of course it's completely re revolutionized you see when i was myself a student uh, i i don't think we knew so much about all these things but as the that uh, with the passage of time we became more and more aware of all these things and we, because we in general because we have a vast intake of students in our own department more than 400 every year you see and uh, so uh, these 300 400 students they leave our uh, department or the university successfully and then they get absorbed by these various scientific organizations Uh, but they carry along with them the knowledge and the information and the social media and the uh, available you see now you have hundreds of tv channels and uh, uh, in particular your dd news is giving a good attention to this it it spreads it goes all the way in our villages you see so that's how my top priority goes to dd news and uh, <coughs> you see it even sitting in villages even sitting in small cities now people are very well versed with the scientific developments technological developments of our country and this i think is uh, is going to play a very major role I, I, i don't think most of our students are interested in politics no most of our students are st are interested in the scientific aspects and developing their careers thoughts and programs and developing their career within science the one to 5% can always go into Uh, okay other non academic aspects you see right you know sir um, uh, india has also launched earlier 177 foreign satellites from 19 different countries and today we launched uh, two singaporean satellites uh, what does it mean for a country like india to be able to carry and successfully launch foreign satellites from different countries you see th 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 this is this is a very important question that you have raised in fact what happens the nasa and the esa they are very expensive organizations you see our is a similar the same is true for japan so the european or american or japanese our program is based on uh, i mean we, we use very little uh, amounts of funds for all these things and uh, it has of course been increasing increasing and increasing ever increasing Uh, as i see with the with the passage of time but uh, even with our meager funds we are able to produce lots of uh, lots of good results and landmark results in the world of science and you see this is uh, so low cost is one aspect and high success is coupled with this you see full success high success and low cost and uh, and then our manpower i mean uh, our students are from all over the country uh, they 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 prove themselves to be very useful for the, for the entire for the entire system so now many of them are in nasa many of them are in esa many of them are working with japan but our own team is very proud of having these these talented young uh, scientists uh, and we have our own even the the intake that isro for example takes then they put them on specific training you see of various projects that are going on we are going to have many more important projects very soon actually from isro so isro is a very leading 
scientific organized they, they not only put you in the space physics or astrophysics your, your minds and thoughts but they it inculcates in them it develops in them it attracts them for doing better and better science you see and along with these various possibilities of uh, as i said startups so so the, i mean now here are the results many of our labs you see i know that they try to produce some components that could possibly go on to the payloads of some of these satellites you see which are being eventually sent by by uh, indian space research organization yeah dr kushta and how how does the entry of private players into india's space sector change uh the scenario for indian uh, space sector and how much of a boost does it give to the sector i think it, you see we, we have been extremely successful with our chandrayaan projects and with our uh, mars projects i mean they, they are the leading landmarks you see and then this launching almost on a continuous basis launching of various satellites a group of them sometimes large number huge number of them so e even the entire world sometimes they feel so surprised you see the our success is what uh, uh, drives them sometimes mad actually that our success rate is so high our accuracy is so high our results are so successful and our costs are so low you see so we we, we really do not uh, our our required projects We, we do not ask for the money compare as compared to isa or nasa we ask within our own limits and the government is always supporting them continuously supporting them encouraging them and they they give us enough that we really need we, we, we don't need that much uh, as isa and nasa need so okay Yes. All right, uh, we'll leave it there, uh, Professor Kunstrash. So thank yes. you very much for joining us on DD India this evening and sharing your perspective and helping us understand the situation better when it comes to India's space sector and, of course, the successful. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, thank you very much. To, to you thank also you, and to congratulations to you, your team and. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you, uh, thank okay. you so much, uh, okay. Dr. Kunstrash, from the University of Delhi's Department of Physics and Astrophysics. We were talking about. Uh, what it means for India's space sector when it comes to the launch of PSLV C55 that happened a short while ago from Sri Harikota. Moving on in News Connect as Eid al-Fitr celebrations took over residents. Thank you, sir. Thank you. The violence that has marred the holy Islamic holiday. Our next report gets.